Hello friends, I am still trying to remain peppy and positive, so please forgive the bit of a downward mood. One last thing that I did want to do about apocalypse quarantine time, there's been a lot of talk about cloth masks recently. I know that a bunch of you are just gonna pop down in the uh, comment section yelling that cloth masks are not great PPE. You are correct. However, I've been meaning to do this for a while because ya girl has pollen allergies. This design is based off a couple different uh, designs, including one from the Deaconess Healthcare System. Uh, these are the patient mask design. Uh, they are just a very, very simple two layer cotton mask. So I am going to show you how I made these. There is a an elastic band version and a strappy version. So let's get to that. Okay, so here I have a pile of pre-cut and pinned together rectangles. The outer layer is going to be a very, very thin cotton that I got in one of those hand-me-down scrap bags. You, you know what I'm talking about. And that is going to be the blue gingham. The inside layer is going to be kind of a t-shirt material. It's actually very soft and very comfortable. So all of those are just pre-cut to match each other and pinned together. Here you can see the dimensions. Once, once again, these are going off the Deaconess Healthcare System suggestions. Uh, it is a six by nine inch rectangle. I also have some elastic that I, I'm pretty sure that I got this in another like scrap bag too. And of course we are saving our straps to be made into ear strap bits. I am measuring the elastic out to be into 14 inch strips. I am then going to get a couple and then cut them in half into seven inch strips. I got this measurement from the Deaconess healthcare system, but this just seemed way too big for me. It might be because I have an itty bitty head, but I feel like if I cut this into six inch strips instead, that would probably be more than enough. Then I just grab two equal sized pieces of elastic and pair them up with a pre-cut mask. I do this until I run out of elastic and that allows me to know how many masks are going to be elastic and how many I'm going to need to cut out cloth straps for. I'm basically following a tutorial from the Deaconess Healthcare System with this and leaving about two inches at the top of the middle of the mask so that I can flip it out. The difference from the Deaconess Healthcare that I'm doing is I'm pinning the elastic in place before stitching through and that just did not work for this mask. Um, I guess I missed the elastic with some of the stitches. It just did not catch at all. I then did switch to what the Deaconess Healthcare System video was doing. And uh, I started putting the elastic in the corners as I was about to go over the corner. So please learn from that mistake. And here I am flipping it inside out. And as you will be able to see, I got a floppy end. So I poked the corner out with some scissors, uh, tried to see if there was like a hole where I yanked too hard or pulled it out and I could possibly put the elastic back in. Uh, that, that does not seem to be the case. It just, I wound up having to sew it to the back of the mask. The next one I did, I did follow the Deaconess instructions of putting the elastic in the corners right before I go, go over them and that did work better. I would also like to point out now that I only did the elastic because the Deaconess video recommended elastic uh, and not all healthcare systems are accepting elastic. Uh, some are saying that they are only accepting paracord as mask ties. If you are going to donate these, please make sure that you are using the specifications to your healthcare system. If you are just going to use these as dust and pollen masks, you do you boo boo. To start on the ones that are going to use cloth straps, I'm just stitching them together as if I were stitching together squares for a quilt. So just continuously in a line, together, together, together. Once all of them are done, I am going to flip the whole thing around, sew together the other side so I have a tube, cut them apart from each other, and then flip all of those tubes inside out. I also needed to make some more straps. So uh, this gingham fabric is 
one inch squares by one inch squares so it is really easy to cut two inch strips out of but what i initially read for one of the straps designs said that the straps needed to be 18 inches i think it meant that each mask needed to have 18 inches hanging off the top and bottom of each side because these were not long enough to tie behind your head i wound up tying them behind my ears and that seemed to work that is not the design that hospitals and healthcare systems are supposed to be accepting. But if you are using this as just a dust mask or a pollen mask, it'll work. Then I'm just ironing it as if I'm making bias tape out of it. I'm taking half an inch from each side, folding it inward, and then folding that in and ironing it straight. It's pretty easy to eyeball it on one inch gingham squares, but if you're using a different fabric, you might want to measure them out. Just folding each side into the middle and ironing it up and ironing it up and ironing and ironing and ironing. Flip it over and iron some more. And I had to make these for eight masks with straps, so I had to do this 16 times. Off camera, I have pre-pleated and pinned the masks. So now I am just sewing down the not bias tape. Realistically, I should fold in the tips and sew that closed. We are skipping this step in favor of fray check. That is not the most correct method, but these are at this point experiment masks because at this point I was extremely suspicious of their efficacy. So this is the strappy version of a finished mask. And uh, as, as a joke, I kind of want to take it to Kroger to give to the workers in a Bed Bath & Beyond. Wait, no, it's Bath & Body Works box. <laughs> Cause that's just what I think of when I see this uh, blue gingham now. <laughs> I was told go for the 18 inches for these little straps. They are not supposed to go behind your head if you're doing 18 inches. I use 20 inches and they go around my ears. And uh, I have a little bitty head. <laughs> like I did not use the child size, I promise. I promise I was looking at the adult size measurements. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing with the ear loop, but the exact opposite problem. It asked for seven inch elastic strands, and I feel like six inches would have been plenty. Like I've been having to put it on and then clip it together in back of my head with like a safety pin or a paper clip. <laughs> I don't know. But this is why they're going to Kroger instead of like a hospital. <laughs> but yeah. I'm a failure. And I will reiterate, not heavy duty PPE, but I was outside this morning doing some yard work and uh, that really did, <laughs> and having a mask on really did help protect from like all the dirt and pollen and whatnot that was flying around. But thank you so much for watching. New videos come out on Mondays. I might be doing a short bonus video on Thursdays. So I have something to do and I don't go insane. <laughs> But like always, feel free to leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below. And like always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!